Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Wade with Black Tie Barn. Here on this channel, we talk about candle making, running a small business, helping other handcrafters, candle makers, and other business owners on their journey. Now, I haven't worn this shirt in quite a long time. The reason is, is because I haven't been able to do candle reviews in a long time, at least especially to the frequency that I used to do them. Unfortunately, I've just been so overwhelmed and busy that it's been a really hard thing to keep up with. But that being said, I do have a few that have been waiting quite a long time, so I wanted to go ahead and get those done as soon as I possibly could. If you are new to this channel and have yet to see any of these type of videos in the past, the way these work is that subscribers here on the channel have sent in their products voluntarily, asking for me to review and test their products, and let them know any feedback that I have, uh, things that I would do if it were me, hence the shirt. And like I said, unfortunately, I haven't really had much of an opportunity to do these for quite a while. Now, the one we're doing today is from a company called Lost Tail, L-O-S-T-A-I-L, and I'm really excited to jump into this one. And what we're going to do is unbox these, take a look at everything that's in the box, um, including the products, obviously. Take a look at anything we can visually see and smell. So the labels, uh, we'll look at the wax, the wick. We'll try to make some speculative guesses of what the materials might be uh, being used. And then the second portion of this video will be after I had had some time to test it. I'm going to let you know how the candles burned. The wicking, the hot throw, the every, everything really as far as you're evaluating a test candle. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And while I'm getting this box open, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you would like to, you can do that below for free. Big red button. You just click it. Cost you nothing. I'd love to have you around for future videos, not just candle review videos, but all the ones about candle making and uh, behind the scenes about my business and how to run a small business and things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, we've got a couple stickers here. Lost Tail. That bunny looks sort of familiar. I'm assuming it's not the same one that I'm thinking about. Really like this logo a lot. Cool little keychain, and we've got two letters now and later. Again, if you haven't seen any of these type of videos, or you haven't seen one in a long time, some they often give me two letters. One is the one I'm going to read now, which tells us some basic information, whatever they want to share up front. The reason they do a later one is after I've made some guesses on what the products are and the materials being used, then we open this and see if I was right or wrong, how close I was. It's just to have a little fun. All right, so we're going to set later aside. And we're going to focus on the now letter. Okay, I'm going to read this real quick and I'll summarize it for you. All right, so this is from a husband and wife team that started their candle in 2020. Not as an impact of uh, the pandemic or anything like that. They just wanted to also have something they could do from home. And the one thing that I want to share from the letter is that everything they do, as far as the products go, is done by them in-house. Uh, so the fragrance combinations, the vessels, the wicking, obviously the candle making, uh, the labels, the product photography, everything they do as a team. Oh, look at that. Even the little sticker holding the package together. It's a little black bunny. All right. Very well packaged. Look at this. It looks fantastic. So really thick, good bubble wrap here. Uh, black too that matches their logo. And then two products inside individual boxes. These are just standard. Th this is, this is a great start. So what I want to point out already is a lot of people are a lot of new makers, a lot of new businesses really struggle trying to get these like high quality product boxes. So they're looking for special custom boxes. Uh, to put their products in and make them a little bit more luxurious, upscale, just really trying to tap into the visuals, right? The presentation. But what I want to point out is that these are just standard white tuck top boxes. These are not custom boxes. These are standard boxes that they just are using some custom tape across the top and a stamp. That's it. So you can do a great job of, of making the look that you want without having to spend a fortune on custom product boxes that have a minimum order quantity of a thousand. You just don't have to go that route. So these look great so far. I really like the, the look, the whole vibe these are giving off. It says Lost Tail on one side, and then it has the uh, the logo on the other. I love the simplicity of this. I'm actually very jealous of it. I think it's a fantastic look and logo and design. Really excited to jump into these. Very nicely packaged with a business card inside. And then inside is also a separate little uh, satchel that has their logo stamped on it as well, if you can see that. Looks amazing. And again, Lost Tail on one side, Bunny on the other. They've done a great job with the theme and branding here. Love it. And then they have a care card that's included in the box, separate of the candle. Very nice touch. Let's open this up. I love these little satchel bags like this, or satchet, or whatever they're called. I like them. Oh, love it. Love it. This is interesting. This is definitely a different look than I'm used to. So let's talk about this for a minute. This is really, really cool. We have the actual logo transparent sticker or, or a clear label on the front looks fantastic and stands out great really really nice with the black lid the black uh, logo and the white cream or, or natural colored wax and then they have a separate label for more of the specifics on the fragrance the warning information the ingredients or any, any other information they want to share some of the note profiles of what's in the fragrance um, again, there's uh, more information about the company and then it says number 1844. I'm not entirely sure 
what that's referencing, but maybe we will find out. Let's see here. So this is a nine and a half ounce candle or 270 gram candle. It is a 100% pure soy wax with an approximate 40 to 50 hour burn time. This one is citrus peel, amaretto, currant, tonka, wood, and rum. That's an interesting combination. I'm really looking forward to smelling this. The actual name of the candle is Art Museum. I assume with the size of this, especially being a soy wick candle, it's probably going to be double wicked, but not necessarily. Let's find out. Yeah, so there we go. Double wicked candle. Oh, that smells so good. What am I smelling here? Okay, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't really know what an art museum smells like, so I don't know if that's accurate. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Uh, but this smells like, um, huh, some kind of hint of a slight perfumey, cloney type fragrance with some woodsy undertones. I think I'm getting a little bit of that rum. Definitely getting a little bit of that citrus peel. Not straight citrus, but like lemon peel. It's it's pretty interesting. But some kind of like bar of soap, like zest or lemon something soap. I don't know. Very potent, very good cold throw, which is really, really normal with soy wax candles. So as many of you probably know, soy wax gets a bad reputation sometimes for the hot throw. And to be perfectly fair, apples to apples, comparing every single wax together, hot throw by default naturally is usually going to be better with paraffin. Now, that's just kind of out of the box rule. That doesn't mean all the time. It's de definitely going to depend on fragrance. It's going to depend on the size of the jar and all these other factors. But again, comparing apples to apples, the hot throw paraffin is usually superior, usually, but the cold throw soy is almost always superior. At least in my experience, it just throws off a great, great cold throw. So very strong, smells awesome. I can't wait to light this one up. Um, I'll talk about my guesses on some of the materials after we get to the next one. I assume they're both going to be the same materials. God, these are really in there though. There we go. So we got another business card. Actually one for each, the husband and wife combination. That's cool. And so they got these like liners inside these boxes too. This can help uh, during heat. Uh, really just this helps insulate the candles due to weathering when it's shipping. I honestly don't know how effective it is. I've done it myself in the past too, like as a just in case, but I don't really know how much of an impact it makes. Uh, but I really like that it's cube shaped and fits the box perfectly. I don't know if you guys can see that with the little lid. So I'd be curious if they're doing this on their own or if they're made like this. Hopefully they'll let us know in the comments because it's a cool idea. All right, so let's open this up here. Loving the bunny, love the bunny. I might make that the thumbnail of the video. Love the bunny. So this one's called Save Room, number 1998. I'm gonna have to look more at their website and look in trying to get a better idea of their story and their branding here. But it's very unique, very interesting. Fragrance on this one is Undead Florals. That's an unusual description I don't think I've ever heard. I would have called that a flower. Or maybe I'm just being simple-minded and that's actually the name of some kind of floral. I don't know. Tobacco leaf, love it. Bergamot, love it. Vetiver, love it. Honey and musk. All right, musk and honey, eh, whatever. But tobacco leaf, bergamot, and vetiver are literally three of my favorite fragrance combinations for a candle. So I'm sure I'm going to love this. I'm sort of imagining this is going to taste like a woodsy Earl Grey. I don't know. That's probably way off, but let's find out. No, I was wrong. It doesn't smell like that at all. The first notes I pick up are the undead florals, I guess, the florals and the tobacco leaf. Uh, that's the most prominent ones to me. I definitely am getting a little bit of the vetiver and, and bergamot as well, but the standout to me are the tobacco leaf and probably whatever floral, or it may just be this combination of all of it working together. But this is really interesting. Hold on. I got to figure out which one of these I like better. Oh no, it's actually easy once I, yeah, I definitely prefer the second one better. Uh, what was it called? Save room. Interesting. I like this fragrance a lot. I have a tobacco fragrance. It's kind of similar to that. That's what it reminds me of. That's probably why that, that note is jumping out to me the most. Okay, so let's talk about the wax and wick on these. You know, they said they're using a pure 100% soy wax. If, you don't, if you're not aware of this, the majority of soy waxes aren't 100% soy. Most soy waxes have something else in them as a kind of like a stabilizer is one way to say it. Uh, they usually have either some coconut or maybe a tiny bit of beeswax. Most of them have a small amount of refined or food grade paraffin. It's very, very common. They did specifically point out several times that this is 100% soy wax candle. So with that being said, I'm going to have to, so with that being said, I'm going to have to trust that that is the case. If it did not specifically say 100% soy, there are a few other guesses I would throw at this as well, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with that and trust that it's 100% soy. And if that's the case, there's really only a couple that come to mind. Being a fairly new company, they probably started with something that is uh, very common, easy to get access to, lots of suppliers, 
Uh, very, very common for new candle makers to start with. And that would be Golden Wax 464 Wax. So that would be my assumption on this. It is sort of a safe answer, but it is common. It's a soy wax, 100% soy wax. The color looks right. So that's what I would go with is Golden Wax or Golden Brands 464. As far as the wicks go, the most common wicks with this wax are usually either a CD wick, sometimes HDP, sometimes Eco, sometimes Premier Wicks. And just kind of taking a quick look at these, it's not the latter, it's not Eco or, or a Premier Wick. It's got to be either HTP or CD. Honestly, it could go either way. I don't know how well the camera is showing this, but it could go either way. Fairly flimsy and just looking at the threads, if I had to guess, if I had to guess just because of the type of wax, if I'm right about the wax, I'm going to assume that these are CD Wicks and they're going to be a couple small ones. It could be anything from a CD3 up to a CD5. I think that's probably a bit too much. So somewhere in that range, probably on the lower side would be my guess. The one thing I also want to mention before we start testing these is that if this is 464 wax or really any other 100% soy wax, is they do have this tendency to frost, which is that crystallization pattern that you see uh, almost looks chalky on the surface of the candles. The tops of these don't have it at all. Now, when the candles are undyed, it is much harder to see that on the surface. So that's that's part of it. Now, they do have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a hexagon. They have five-sixths of this hexagon jar covered with a label. So if there is a lot of frosting going on, this is an excellent idea to hide it. The one side that's open looks perfect. So on the bottom, it looks like I'm seeing maybe a tiny bit. But again, being undyed, just a natural color, it's really, really hard to see. But that's the first part. Fantastic looking candles. I think you've done an excellent job, especially for being like, new makers and running a new business. I know it's been a couple of years now, but this is excellent work. Awesome branding, awesome job, awesome consistency and color. Love everything about it. Those are my guesses on the materials. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to start testing these, but like literally I'll be back in like just a second and I'm going to tell you how the testing went. So I'll be gone for a week in real time, but stay right here. And we're going to talk about how these burned. All right, I am back. I've been testing these candles from Lost Dale for the last Oh, not quite a week, but somewhere around four days. And I test them the same way I would anyone else, or including my candles. So the normal correct burns, I'll throw in a couple power burns here and there. And just to get a general idea of the overall burn performance, as well as hot throw. Those are the two things that I'm looking for at this part of the testing. And in this part of the video, what we're going to be discussing. The visuals, the, the aesthetics, everything, labels, all of that, we already talked about in the first part. So this is all about burn testing, performance, and hot throw. And the first thing I want to lead with and start with is how excellent... These were at hot throw. Now I'm still pretty sure that these are 464 wax candles and a lot of people will tell you that wax can often struggle to get hot throw, which is true. It can and it often does, but it's because it is picky with your fragrance oils. It's not that it can't throw well. It's not that soy wax in general can't have a good strong hot throw. It's just harder to get that than it would be with some other waxes or wax blends. So the main takeaway when you're using these types of waxes is to make sure you are deliberate and diligent with your testing and choosing fragrance oils that work well. Not just ones that smell good to you out of the bottle, but ones that when you test still have that good quality that you're hoping for. And you can definitely get those with the soy wax like 464 if that's what we're using. Now, before we get to the particulars of the hot throw and to let you know which one I preferred over the other as far as the fragrance goes, and before I get to opening that later letter that tells us the specific materials that we're working with and see how close I was on my guesses. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the wicking and how these things burned. We're going to talk about these together. I'll show you a little bit of footage from both candles and we'll talk about, you know, what happened at different stages of the candle. But we're going to talk about them collectively as if they were the same because they burned almost identical to each other, which is really, really good, by the way, for consistency. So the very first burn for both of these candles did get a pretty quick melt pool. And if you are brand new to candle making or just kind of learning and you're hearing a lot of other candle makers tell you, you know, you don't want to be over wicked, your wick is too high or your wick is too large, you need to wick down because you shouldn't get a melt pool that quickly, and you don't want the wick to be too big at the beginning because later on it'll be way too big. Now there's really good reason for that and I would agree with them for the most part as well. However, when you're double wicking a candle, things change a little bit. First of all, the candle is going to get a larger melt pool faster. By design, that's the point of having a double wicked candle. You have two flames that are going to generate a larger pool a little bit quicker. So it is much more common to get a full melt pool faster with a double wicked candle than it is a single wick candle. The key is, is as the candle continues to burn, that that melt pool doesn't get too big, too deep, too hot at any point, which is kind of the balance act between double wicked candles. The other thing that's important to know, and I've talked about this in other videos, is it's very easy to assume that your candle is over wicked if you only judge the first burn. The reason for that is the candle has a lot more drafts, airflows, things happening at the top of the candle because it's, the wax is much higher. 
that it doesn't always burn the most efficiently. What I'm trying to say is that the first couple burns, it's very, very common to get larger mushrooms, larger flames, and basically you're going to think that your candle is overwicked. And sometimes you will be. And other times you might continue to test that same candle and you'll notice that further down in the burn, the wick isn't near as large. And if anything, it just, now it seems almost perfect. Or sometimes it even seems too small. That happens sometimes with double wick candles more than it does single wick candles. So the lesson here, what I'm trying to say is that you can't always just judge your wick or your candle performance based off that first burn. And these can and these two candles are both good examples of why. Both of these candles appear to be over wicked, too large of a wick by several sizes, at least to me at first. They smelled great, they burned great, good melt pool, nothing really wrong other than the fact that the two wicks seemed to be a little bit too large at first. However, as the candle would burn down, the second burn, third burn, basically the rest of that top half of the candle, the flames actually got smaller. And that is again, pretty common with a multiple wick candle. And at no point did those wicks ever get too large, at least at that point, at least in the middle of the candle. And so it can be very confusing if you make a candle where the first burn seems overwicked, the next couple burns seem underwicked, then later it's overwicked again, and it's that back and forth that it's just, it's almost mind numbing and it's so aggravating because you can't figure out what information is reliable and which is not. The biggest piece of advice I can give you when it comes to wicking, and I would say that Lost Tail has done a great job with this, is that you're looking for the best overall performing wick. It's not gonna be perfect all the way through, at least most of the time. There's too many variables, there's too many factors. There's drafts, there's air flows, there's different temperatures that the candles might be sitting in. There's uh, different fragrance loads, fragrant types. There's just so many factors that can affect how a candle burns. And by nature, a flame, a wick itself, is not gonna be the exact same all the time. It's not gonna burn the same way every single time. You could make a batch of 10 candles that are identical. They're all gonna burn a little bit different. That's just the nature of working with something like a candle wick. So your goal is to test and find the best overall wick. At no point do you want the wick to be way too large and, and a safety risk, and at no point do you want the wick to drown out and not perform at all. You're trying to find that happy medium, and you have to be willing to compromise. Sometimes it's gonna burn good, sometimes not as good, but overall, a really good candle. And I can tell you that both of these candles did that very, very well. The first couple burns in each candle, the wick seemed a little bit too large. The middle section of the candle, as you can see that the, in the footage, that the candles burned very, very well. The jar never got hot. The, uh, the melt pool was between a quarter and a half inch at the most, smelled fantastic, the wicks burned beautifully. And then I would say the bottom quarter, bottom third of the candle maybe, the wicks started to get too large again. And there is one particular wick that was curling so much that uh, it was actually curling so far back into itself, almost back into the wax. Now that can happen for a couple different reasons. That to me is usually an indication of one of two things. Either it wasn't trimmed quite enough, and if you do see that, check how much you're trimming your wick first. I did trim these, so I don't think that that was the issue. The other thing is it's, it could still be a little overwicked or it was burned too long. This was not after a power burn. So I would still recommend, even though these burned beautifully, start to finish for the most part, I would still probably consider trying maybe one size smaller and seeing if it helps. Now, I told you earlier in part of the video that I thought these wicks were probably CD wicks, maybe HTP, but probably CD wicks and somewhere between like a three and a five, maybe even a six, whatever it is, I would just go down one size. So if it's a five, I'd try a four. If it's four, I would try a three, two of those, of course. That would be my advice on the wicking. Overall though, a very good burn top to bottom, beautiful performing candle. Now let's talk about something that not many people are gonna tell you with 464 wax, which is the star of the show, in this case was the hot throw. It was incredible for both candles. Now, I'm not gonna rehash what I said at the beginning of this section of the video about how to get good hot throw with soy wax and 464. Other than be picky with your fragrances, choose carefully, do ample testing, and then make sure that you are satisfied with the results. You can get very good hot throw and very good performing candles with almost any wax. But for those of you that are struggling with this with soy, or 464 specifically, if that's what we're working with, then just focus on your oils. I did a previous video several months ago called so you want stronger hot throw. And it wasn't, it's not so much a technical video about like little things you have to do. I mean, there's some of that as well, but part of that video talks about this very point. And that is that sometimes getting good hot throw comes down to the materials you're using. And not just your wax, but even your fragrance oil. So you have 10 fragrance oils and a couple of them just aren't working well for you and your wax, just move on, move on and find something else. There's plenty of oils out there. There's hundreds of thousands of them where you can make your own blends, which is, what I'm kind of thinking Lost Tail might have done here. 
Either way, the hot throw was incredible on both of them. No complaints whatsoever. I was actually shocked by how good the hot throw was on both of these. Granted, they are larger diameter jars. They are double wicked candles. Those typically would have a stronger hot throw anyways, but I was burning these in open spaces. I did it at the retail shop where I'm working on the floor in a big open space. I did it in an open concept kitchen living room area. These things were fantastic. One time I accidentally burned them both in the same room together because I forgot to move one. And uh, the combination of the two scents together was actually excellent as well, by the way. So speaking of fragrance, I much preferred the uh, Save Room candle over the museum candle at first. The one that had the little bit of tobacco leaf and vetiver and all of that, um, especially the, the cult throw. The longer these burn, the more these burn. I still do prefer that one a little bit, but I gotta say the other one grew on me quite a bit. I actually really like how um, the museum candle smells when it's burning. The, the cult throw smelled very, uh, like a bar of soap with some other interesting notes as well. But as it's burning, it was a much more complex, very good fragrance overall as well. Although I still prefer the Save the Room a little bit. and uh, But either way, I think almost everyone would be happy with both these candles. Interesting fragrances, very good burn, very good hot throw, very good job. Well done overall. I really don't have much to say other than, like I said about the Wiki, maybe try one size smaller and see if it works. It may not. It may not be the best option. Your choice might be the correct one. Uh, just not really sure. Not really sure without trying. All right, so now let's get to the letter, the after letter, and let's see what they wanted to share with us. Uh, that we didn't know before. So now that we've gone through the candles and tested them and all of that and made some guesses on the materials. <laughs> all right. It says, now, as for what makes up our candles, wax, as I'm sure you guessed, the wax is straight Golden Brands 464 Pure Soy Wax. So there we go. Uh, I, I had a couple other options that I thought it might have been, but that's the one I would lean to, obviously. That was my guess. So definitely got a check mark on that one. All right, wicks. Again, I'm sure you already figured that these were both CD wicks. There we go. So I was kind of torn between CD and HDP. I did lean more towards the CD wicks and I guessed between its size two and five or three and six, something like that. Uh, and they are actually both CD fours. So I would say we pretty much a check mark on that too. Got it within a couple sizes. And knowing that it's CD fours now, what I would do if it were me, which I don't have my what would Wade do shirt on right now, but if I did, what I would do is try a CD three in both of them. Uh, two CD3s in each candle, see if it's any better. And you may have already tried that. If, if you did and the CD4s were better, then stick with it. But if you haven't, consider giving it a shot. The fragrance oils were custom blends of uh, different oils that they used together to come up with this combination. So it is, it is kind of proprietary to their company. But they also asked about that wick trimming guide or the candle care card that was in the boxes. I don't have it with me here anymore, but it kind of looked like a shirt almost. Uh, you saw me pull it out of the box and show it a little bit. Uh, it says that that's just a prototype. They're just working on a better way to create that information for candle customers. And they asked uh, if I had any interesting thoughts or feedback on those care cards and trimming guides. Uh, yes, I think that sending that information in some fashion is a really good idea. Care card, uh, trimming guide, things like that. Uh, although I don't really have a preference on how you do it. Mine are just rectangle black and white cards. Uh, you you know, yours is a prototype that looks a little bit different. I don't think that matters. I would say do whatever you can to make it match your theme, your brand. But other than that, yeah, I think it's a great idea to include some information like that. All right, so that concludes this testing. Thanks for sending these candles in for review. Thank you more so for being patient while I got to them. And I apologize, I'm not really doing these as much as I used to. Uh, at some point, I hope down the road, I can change that again. But thanks for sending them in one more time. Fantastic job by Lost Tail. Excellent candles. Uh, the fact that you guys have, have done this in just a couple of years, I think you're on really, really good track and very, very impressed with uh, with pretty much every aspect of it. Really love the theme, the look of the candles as well. So excellent job. If anyone has any more questions about this review or comments or feedback, definitely show your love in the description or in the comment section below and let them know uh, that, uh, that you appreciated them sending the candles in for testing as well. Thank you all for tuning in. Check out this next video and we'll see you next time.